Every now and then I would see a opening of a beautiful color film from back in the day and it would say Vista Vision, you know, like for Vertigo or North by Northwest or, or White Christmas. Beautiful color. And I had always wondered, you know, like, you know, what is this division? You know, is it, it's not Cinemascope. Like, mm. what's its deal? Well, it's an interesting story. And though its use was short lived initially, its rebirth in the 70s uh, was a vital part of the making of a big blockbuster effect film that changed filmmaking at that time. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we're going to give you the inside tips you need to make great video. In the early 50s, TV was still new, but it was nipping at the heels of Hollywood. And it was easier, obviously, to, you know, stay in versus go out to the movies with this box that, you know, once you bought it, the only other expense was the electric bill wasn't cable then or anything. I mean, the, it was beamed in. So they saw the writing on the wall and they needed to compete. So, you know, you had things like CinemaScope and then you had more gimmicky things like 3D glasses and other crazy stuff that they were trying to come up with. But one new format was VistaVision. And that was from Paramount. And it's kind of very interesting for a number of reasons. And what they did is they realized that, okay, well, you know, film, when you were recording it, and even later when you project the print, is going through the camera vertically. It's called four perf vertical, because it takes up the height of a frame is four perfs of 35 millimeter film. They realized, well, you know, in the still world, still photography, it goes through the gate horizontally. And that's called eight perf horizontal. So you're getting a lot more area, almost four times. And that means not pixels, but a lot more. That the equivalent then uh, is a uh, film grain. Right? A lot. You just you're getting more information. Therefore, you could you know get great imagery. It it was like their version at that time of, of 4K. You know, was it equivalent to 4K? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was equivalent to higher, but I mean, you had a lot of information in that eight perf horizontal frame. So they shot some films in it and they made some prints that were projected the same way, eight perf horizontal, but those were usually just for premieres and whatnot. I would love to see an original uh, VistaVision print. The, um, but what they did is they then, for the general public, is they downsampled or press that image in onto your standard four perf vertical print. But the image still looked great because you're starting with this big high quality area. It's like taking extra pixels, right? It's kind of like my C100, uh, my Canon C100 here. It's got a 4K sensor and it outputs 1080. And that image looks fantastic. Now, if it had a 1080 sensor and output 1080, and I compared the two, they would be very, very different. It, um, so that's what VistaVision, right? That's kind of part of the allure, right? And if you watch, um, you know, I would love to see a good print of those, but when you when you see those on DVD or not, those films that look amazing, the color is amazing. Now, it was short-lived. I think the last film was shot in 1961 by Paramount. The cameras were still around. Maybe they were used here and there uh, uh, around the world, supposedly, but they didn't use them for very long because it just really ended up wasn't needed and wasn't very cost effective. One issue was that it's eight per versus four. It's double the amount of film stock you have to buy and shoot and double you have to develop and make prints from and make inner negatives from that was expensive. And also, it had to screen through that, the gate of that camera twice as fast in order to get 24 frames per second. So that added extra mechanical issues and they worked, but when you think about it, it's going through faster, you're gonna get more rips, tears, and more issues. It just wasn't worth the trouble and the extra cost in the end. Jump to the early 70s and a group of special effect 
uh, uh, guys grabbed some of the VistaVision cameras because they were uh, shooting the special effects of spaceships and whatnot for this um, little no film called Star Wars. And they did that because they needed that extra information because they were downsampling. They were doing composites, right? They needed a separate shot of, of the TIE fighter, a separate shot of the explosion, a separate shot of the other ships, um, lasers, photon can, you know, all that stuff happening in that shot. And it was composited together on optical bench. So you were going through generations and with film, unlike digital, you're losing information over time. So you needed to start with a bigger image so that when you made that 35 millimeter print, it looked good. As we know, those effects looked great, right? They still stand up today. Now, eventually digital comes around and everything changes and film slowly goes away, even though people are still shooting film today, which is crazy to me. Um, but in 2008, I think it was when they shot the Indiana, jo the fourth Indiana Jones movie, they used some of the VistaVision cameras there for, for certain special effect shots where they needed that big image, the, the same on Scott Pilgrim versus the world. But here's something else that's cool, I mean, talking about digital, is that VistaVision, that horizontal eight perf, well, that kind of found its way into digital. Well, how is that? Well, when digital sensors were being made, they, the manufacturers realized that they needed to stay within certain formats and sizes that were familiar to the still photography world and the film world. And in the still photography world, right, it was 8 perf horizontal. So that's what we call full frame. So where they, that's where that size came from of sensor. Because that way the lens, right, a 50 millimeter lens is going to do the same thing on a full frame as a still photographer was used to when they were shooting 35 millimeter film. They want to get the same area, the same, the same look. And for film with vertical four perf, right, 35 millimeter film, the framing there was, or that is the size, crop frame. So that's where the crop frame size sensor came from. So respect to the inventors of VistaVision, the first, you know, 4K in the film world and analog and mechanically what it must have took, right? And that also led to another really cool film format and that is IMAX. IMAX is 65 millimeter negative, 70 millimeter print, and that goes through the gate horizontally for right, the biggest frame ever, those IMAX cameras. If you've ever get a chance to see one, they're huge, they're, they're off the hook piece of, of beautiful machinery inside. They're just something else. And the idea that people were shooting 3D, right, with two negatives and one camera, I don't even, I don't even want to think about it. it, makes my head hurt. What it took to get some great imagery back in the day uh, with as many, not pixels, but as much film, grain, silver, that silver highlight in there as you could get. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the description, in the description below. No, only I can write there. <clears throat> let me know in the comments below.